Hi, I'm Taryn, and for today's art activity, we're going to be drawing some cherries. Now, very technical materials we'll be using today. We'll be using a plain piece of paper. It can be just paper from your printer. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And a red and a blue ballpoint pen. And that's all. So we can get started. I'll just line you up with my board. You can work flat or you can work at an easel. It's completely up to you. I'll just bring it in nice and close so you've got all the detail ready. So to start off, what we're going to be doing is to do, in the middle of our page, a little tiny curve like that. Super simple. And then once you've done that, leave it a little bit of a space and you're going to draw a much bigger one. <laughs> because I'm working upright, sometimes these pens, the ink runs to the other end. So then you're going to draw a bigger one. Do that again. And then once you've done that, we're going to line up either side. Now, they're a fruit. They're not perfect. So don't worry if your shape's a little bit irregular. That's it. And you can see I tend to do lots of lines when I'm drawing. Might be a little bit wonky. And then you can actually bring another line sort of just out to the other side there. So see that kind of gives the general shape of the cherry. Then we're going to draw another one next to it. This time, we don't want them all to be facing the exact same way. So the next one, we're going to be leaning over a little bit more. So aim for similar size. We're going to be just touching. So even if you want to sort of give yourself a little area there where it's touching. And this time, we're not going to be able to see the little the little divot in it because it's more into the middle. So we're just drawing sort of a rounded shape. And you can see mine don't exactly line up on the bottom. And if you want, you can add a little bit of an idea of where the stem's going to come out. So this one's stem's going to be coming downwards. But we'll draw that in in a moment. You have to excuse the shadow going across there. It seems the sun's decided to come out. Okay. Now this side... We're going to add another one. Now, this time we're going to leave a little bit of a, a little bit of a gap between them. So leave a little bit of room, and I'm going to make him sit a little bit lower. Now, similar to this one, where it's got this divot, I'm going to bring it around. But the divot's going to be leaning outwards slightly. Let's get my pen working again. If you're working flat, you won't have the problem with your ballpoint pen running out. Like so. So you can see each one's at a slightly different angle. Shadow's getting a bit annoying. Trying to figure out a way of getting out, getting with it, bit of it. Well, hopefully it won't be too difficult. All right. So the next thing we want to do is draw in some of our stems. So this one I'm going to bring sort of 
down this way. So just drawing a little line like that. And then what you want to do is make it slightly bigger at the bottom, then go skinny, and then have slightly wider at the other end. So that's usually where one joins onto another one. And then because we've got this curve going this way, we want to counteract that but by having this stem sort of leaning this way just a little bit. So same thing, a little bit bigger at the bottom. And going right there at the top. Now because this is a video, if going a bit fast for you you're welcome to pause and catch up and then start again when you're ready you can at least do this in your own time so now this one I'm actually gonna you're taking it upright but at a little bit more of an angle than this one so you're just leaning it out because this cherry's facing this way a bit more but this one I'm gonna have a little bit more curve work again. Definitely doesn't like working up front. Like so. Now on each of them we're going to be putting in a highlight. So on this side here, I want you to draw a nice little oval. This one can be a little bit more rounded because we're seeing the fruits leaning over. And then this one's going to have one about there. So you can see in similar spots on each of the cherries. And then the next step would be, if you can imagine the light is coming from this direction, then we're going to have shadows over this side of each one. So to draw your shadows, still using our red, I want you to sort of draw a curve. This one's going to be going behind this one. So you see on each one, using that movement of my wrist, I've created these sort of curves. And then coming back the opposite direction, we're going to do curve the opposite way using a similar angle so each one's fairly similar and in this case these two are going to kind of join up and then all I do is just put a little curve on the end so you can see there's a similar shape for each one And then after that, the next step is we're going to start shading our cherries. So starting from where we did our highlights, just lightly start shading. And I want you to cover Sorry, you can hear my dogs barking in the background. Shading, shading, shading. All 
I reckon they plan it this way that almost every time I'm filming, that's when they start to muck up. So you can see like that, I'm not trying to be too neat. And then the next one, so I'll have to come from a different angle. I'm trying to hold the pen upright so it doesn't want to um, run out. I'll have to alternate it, I think. Same thing. Just enjoy the motion of the shading. Not worrying too much about being perfect, just nice, even little lines, like so. So with this one, this work, it's all about layering. So we're not focusing too much on really neatly trying to get every single piece, piece of the paper covered. Like that. So you're just starting to get some color on there. See now it's sort of starting to take shape. So we naturally don't want to go in too hard too fast because it's about slowly darkening each of the layers to build that form and give it more of a 3D impression. like the sound. <laughs> Almost therapeutic. There you go. So you can see now they're shaded in. Now what I'm going to do is now think more about those shadows we were talking about earlier and where we want it darker. So I want you to come back and go darker again around bottom side. You can go at a slightly different angle. You don't have to make sure you keep it at the same angle. And I want to sort of bring up there a little bit towards the middle. So we've got this other side here. A little bit darker in there, show that it's dipping in. I've got to keep shaking my pen. See, I'm just darkening the sections as we go. Now, it's similar on this one, just darken up in the middle bit there, and then start your shading. More underneath. Now, you're welcome to spend more time on yours. You can get it neater if you like. Obviously, I'm just giving you a bit of a taste to experiment. And then once you know how, you can then play with other things too. Next time you're in doing the grocery shopping, you could pick up some cherries and then take them home and sit there and look at them and think how you draw them. Look at the highlights, look at the shadows. Sometimes it does help if you place them on a piece of white paper. And, and look at the shadows. Surprisingly, there's, there's often a lot of colour in the shadows. They're not usually just, you know, you can imagine a shadow is grey or blue. You get a lot of the actual object reflecting into it. So, of course, you're going to get some red tones reflecting into your, your, your shadows. So sometimes just taking the time to observe 
and look at the object and look at how you know you can change the lighting on it put it in different positions to see how that changes the shadows or just use the shape of the cherry laying it in different positions my kids always have a bit of a giggle at me shopping like i pick up the apples and scrutinize them and turn them around and pick them according to the shape and the colors and and pears as well oh they're a good one so it's uh yeah shopping does tend to take a little bit longer with me and god forbid anybody should eat it before i have actually drawn them <laughs> you can hear me shaking the pen This one's going to have a lot more shadow. Also, too, because these are two, these two are butting up against each other. This time, we're going to have shadow where they both meet, as well as underneath. We're going to have shadow right in the middle here around the stem, but then it's also going to come around it. in this one trying to hold the pen upright trying to keep my hand out of the way of the camera very technical Of them around the base and go darker again. Might add a little bit more shading around the edge of these. So a lot darker. Try and get the lines closer together around the base, especially in between these two here. See, we're sort of building it up as we go. Like that. And now focusing again on this one. Shaking my pen a bit. the shading tone into this one. That's better. And I'm going to put some into the stem just so it's not perfectly white. There's a bit of shading there. Because we're just using the two colours, we won't be, you know, our stems won't be green. But you do don't want them left out. So like I was mentioning before about having a little bit of the colour reflecting into the shadows, I just want you to lightly get my pen 
working just tint the smallest amount down into my shadows directly underneath. Just within that section. And then the same on the other ones. forget to turn one device off. <laughs> turn the computer down, turn the other phone off, we got that one. Now we're going to switch to our blue pen and this is where we've got the same approach but we're enhancing the shadows where we see them so any cooler color whether it's if you've got a purple pen if you've got a blue pen even with painting if you want to create shadow you add in a cold color and that deepens those sections allowing for that darker tone creating the impression of shadow so generally any cooler color will give you that extra depth. So what I'm bringing is, especially down underneath there, we want a lot more shadow down under there. Up into the base of the stem here. Even sort of shadow it a little bit up into there. And then not too much. We still want that red showing through. But you can see how automatically it's it's adding another dimension to the artwork. It's creating that depth. A little bit up into there, but not too much. Really focusing on that dark down underneath. shade this in just a tiny bit more around that edge there just so it's not clinging to the very edge as we know 3d objects don't have an outline as such and then it's similar again on this one starting with the darker section Shadows up on the top there. A little bit into the stem. Sorry, my hands over the top there a little bit. Very hard working. Not the right. And then start your shading. So I'm going to create more shadow in the middle here and then leaving it more red around the edge. Looks like there's some light reflecting up underneath. I'm going to create more dark on the underside. Alright, remember like last time, very dark in between the two. as if the two join up there. Really dark where the 
this area around the stem and underneath because there would be a bit of a shadow coming off that stem too which we will add some of that into our shadows in a moment as well See, yeah, it's nice how those the two colours then start to blend. It creates more of a purpley colour, dark red purple. I'll take this right up and around. Yeah, scribbling can be fun. stem I just round this shape a little bit more but you can do that you can add and change make changes as you feel just rounding that a bit Now to match this one, I might put a little bit more of the red shading. So yeah, this one's got a little bit more colour to it, so I might just create a little bit more. Yeah, see that sort of just changes the tone? And I might do the same here. Quite often that happens you when you create more depth somewhere else it kind of changes the value in other sections so it sort of doesn't hurt to then see, go back and re-look at it and think mm, no actually now that that's really dark I think I need to add some more of that color in too. All right once we've done that next thing is to with our blue pen start shading in over the whole part of the shadows. Similar to how we started with the cherry. So just lots of different directions. Getting colour on. Hopefully letting the pen work. I definitely don't like being worked off right. Actually aiming for this sort of shading to be more horizontal. So see the direction I've used, see that gives the impression of flatness, like being on a flat object, whereas up here we're using more cross hatching, it gives a different direction to it. So it's surprising how we're not just using shading to give the impression of form, but also directional line. Sorry, I'm working over myself again.
just keep it up until you cut the boom and the hole the surface. I know this looks quite messy, but I'm sure yours will be neater working better. Okay. I should, while we're at this point, an example of this. So exactly the same concept, but this is another artwork I've done of pomegranates. So you can see exactly the same, just red, just blue, how layering can give you the impression of different colour, but also form. So that's sort of, obviously, that's a lot, I've spent a bit more time on that and sort of covered a lot more of the paper, but it's sort of just another example of what other things you could try and just experiment with. So, yeah, there you go. And there's a helicopter going over the top. Seems like everything's happening today. Right, back to it. And then some more scribble. Now what we want to focus on is depth of colour closest to the cherries themselves. We want to get that real depth right up close. see that real dark that's what we're aiming for a little bit more coming around the edges to start with so see it sort of radiates around either side here a little bit Start to go really nice and dark between these two. So I'm keeping the scribbles and the lines closer together in this section so that I'm covering more of the white. Still keeping the shading reasonably flattish. Once again, radiating down the sides of those shadows a bit more. And then again on this one. <laughs> this is such a pain having to um, get the ink. I'm going to keep shaking it to try and keep the ink flowing. one making sure I'm shading heavier either side of that stem to show it out a little bit to see at the moment it look kind of wants to blend in so you can outline it just a little bit more just to get it to show out and shade a tiny bit heavier either side more up here same thing sort of darkening that edge there as it comes out from the cherry it's a little bit more And that 
that's pretty much the gist of it. So obviously, depending on how much time you've got, you can keep working at it. You can get it as refined as that other example that I'd showed you. It's completely up to you. You might prefer to leave it sort of more loose and scribbly like I've done here. It's more about just having a fun, having fun, having a play and just enjoying the process. So it's, um, yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed that today and I look forward to seeing you again next time for another one of our little art programs and um, hope to see you next time. See you.